Hi, I'm Scott from RedmondPhysicsTutoring.com, and in this video I'm going to look at a question from waves and uh, optics and modern physics, specifically about waves of light. This problem was brought to me by a tutoring student, and we didn't quite have time to get to it, but it's a fairly quick problem, so I'm just going to go through and do a, a video solution. So, Kareem, thanks for sharing the problem, and uh, here we go. So the problem states that a diffraction grating places the second order maximum for a wavelength of 682 nanometers at 43 degrees. We have to find the number of slits per millimeter of this grating. And my experience was that uh, with diffraction gratings, there isn't really that much to work with. We have an equation to find, or rather to locate the angles for the maxima as d sine theta is equal to m lambda where d is the distance between adjacent slits, theta is the angle from the central axis to where the maxima appears. I guess that would really be where each maximum appears. m is the index, so when m is equal to zero, that's right along the central axis. So a first order would have m equals one, and second order would be m equals two, for third order, m equals 3, and so on. In this problem, we're told that it's the second order, therefore we're going to use m equals 2. And the last thing, lambda, is the wavelength of light. In terms of units, d, the distance between adjacent slits, I would recommend working with everything in meters, because it just helps keep things consistent. Converting from nanometers to millimeters isn't hard, but it's just more intuitive if you're used to working with everything in meters to keep it in meters. So the wavelength and light wavelength of light, I would also say, is meters. The index has no units, and the angle would be degrees or radians, depending on what you're using with your calculator, because the, you're running that through the sine function. So you're basically just going to get a ratio out of that. Now this all makes sense when you have a whole bunch of slits, and so I'm just drawing a rough representation here. We'll have the central axis going across, that's going to be perpendicular, and then on the right-hand side here we'll have a screen. So then we can end up with a bright spot somewhere when all of the rays of light reaching that spot have constructive interference. And the way we derive this is by looking at adjacent fringes, and we say here's a bright spot. We could possibly call this m equal 1. Uh, it's hard to know. But the basic idea is that all of them add up, and we get constructive interference from every pair of adjacent fringes. And then the angle, because the idea is that the distance to the screen is very far away, and it's much, much bigger than the distance between the slits. The distance between the slits, then, is really just this tiny thing in there. And we're going to have another d between that pair, and we're going to have that same distance across all of the rather the same distance between every pair of slits that are side by side. That's what the adjacent means. So then to get the angle, we really just look at one of these, and I would go from the center. So I would actually say that this angle would be representative there. The idea is that when big D, the screen, is so far away that big D is much, much, much bigger than little d, then the rays all become parallel, and there is only one angle theta. The reason we draw it this way, and you can see that there's an angular difference between the red rays, is just because we can't fit this the proper scale onto a piece of paper or a chalkboard or the screen. So the question then is, how do we use this equation? Well, we know that the second order maximum means that we're going to use m equal 2. d is not given. The angle is given, though, and the wavelength is given. Now, we have to find the number of slits per millimeter. And so let's look at that for a second. To find slits per millimeter is kind of the inverse of D. And this is the part that really confuses a lot of students in my experience. If you can find the millimeters per slit instead and then invert it, it ends up being much easier. So this is actually equal to millimeters per slit inverted, so to the power of negative 1. Now, the millimeters per slit ends up being really just the distance between adjacent slits. So slits per millimeter is really just the distance between adjacent slits inverted, and really that's just the inverse of d. So if I wanted slits per millimeter, I would just need to make sure that I solve for d, but then express d in millimeters when I do the inversion. 
Okay, so if I'm going to substitute in and solve for d, then I can substitute for m we had 2 because we're looking at the second order maxima for the wavelength of light. We had 682 nanometers. So that's 682 times 10 to the power of negative 9 all divided by sine of the angle, and the angle that was given was 43 degrees. So I can divide by sine of 43 degrees, and that isolates d. So when I solve that, I find that d is equal to 2 times 10 to the negative 6 meters, so that's 2 micrometers. But again, I'm going to leave this in terms of meters for now. However, to get slits per millimeter, I should express d in millimeters before inverting it. So if I'm going to be rigorous about converting this, then I want to divide out the meters. So I put one meter on the bottom, and that's equal to 1,000 millimeters. So I multiply by 1,000, and I will get 2 times 10 to the negative 3 millimeters between each pair of adjacent slits. So to invert that, then, I, to find the slits per millimeter, then I find that there are 500 slits per millimeter. And that's it. So one of the odd things about this that a lot of students in my experience don't think of at first is when you're finding the slits per millimeter you can just think of it as a dimensional analysis and look at the units and if you look at then inverting millimeters per slit and that millimeters per slit being the distance between adjacent slits that's really what links it to the variables that we have in terms of d sine theta is equal to m lambda for the diffraction grading. I'm Scott Redmond, and I help students pass physics. If this video was helpful to you, if you would like me to do more about light and maybe a bit less about electricity and magnetism, which has been my most recent focus, then uh, please leave a comment or contact me to let me know. Good luck with physics.